Hello guys and gals, welcome back. Bit of a different one today. I was watching uh, Guy Who Beats on Friday attempting to remake the acid classic High State of Consciousness by Josh Wink. And he was struggling a little bit getting the acid sound close, but I thought I could hear why. So I got to work putting my theory into practice and it turned into quite the rabbit hole. So I thought I'd share the journey. Okay, so Josh Wink made High State of Consciousness using a Roland TB303, the classic baseline synthesizer stroke sequencer. Now, the 303 is quite a simple machine on paper. You have two waveform options, sawtooth and square, and those go through a single resonant low-pass filter, which has an envelope attached. It also had a sequencer, but on the sound side, that is about it. Now, that's all very good in theory. If you play the high state line, here it is, it's in the G major. Using that knowledge, doesn't matter whether it's saw or square, you'll find they sound nothing like the record. The square wave does sound a little bit closer than the saw. But still, nowhere close. There is one more ingredient, however. That is distortion, of course. Most 303s weren't recorded raw. They were driven in some way, uh, usually via some kind of guitar pedal. Now, I know I make dance music for a living these days, but I used to be a rock guy. And I like to think I could still spot some of these distortion types. And back then, there were only a handful of go-to pedals, really. And I can tell from the record that it was probably one of two. My initial suspicion was the Proco Rat or the Ibanez Tube Screamer, model number ironically 808. And it turned out after a few experiments, the Tube Screamer is definitely the closer of the two. And luckily, there is a piece of freeware called Build Your Own Distortion by Chow DSP, which has the Tube Screamer built in. I've got the distortion module here into the tone module. I've just compensated the volume there a little bit with the mixer. And we get a little bit closer. Listen to what happens when I crank the gain. So that's getting there. The resonance of the filter into the distortion is what creates some of that classic acid sound. But we're still nowhere close to the record. And the first confusing thing was, in the record, I can hear an extra octave or octave interaction of some kind. Even before the distortion, I can hear that that is not a normal sawtooth or square. And Josh Wink in one interview did mention he used two 303s to make the record. So that got me thinking, could he have layered them in octaves? And if you try two square waves, an octave apart, you do get a little bit closer. Definitely closer, but still not like the record. So that led me down the rabbit hole of internet forums. I even found the schematic, and what was revealed was the TB303 didn't even have a square oscillator actually itself. The machine was quite cheap, and one of the cost-saving measures was it only had a sawtooth oscillator in there. And the way they achieved a square wave was to clip it through a single transistor. And that led me to this comment, where... They mentioned, depending on the quality of the transistor, this could leave the square wave slightly asymmetrical, which is what we call pulse width. And we can simulate that with either bend or pulse in vital. What that means is basically, instead of 50-50 on up and down phases of the wave, one is slightly longer than the other. And as soon as I change this, it starts to sound like the real thing. First 
verses. Jackpot. Another feature of a lot of distortion pedals from guitars where they actually rolled off a lot of bass, which is important for how it drives the distortion as well. So I've done that here with an EQ. I've uh, brightened up the high mids to get close to the record mix with my favourite free EQ by Variety of Sound, Boot EQ Mark III. I've also thrown on his uh, tape simulator, Ferric TDS. That's going to come in handy for taming the extreme filter resonance later. And that leaves us here. And we get further into the track where the drive increases. Play the original. We could actually go harder there. But now with everything in place, everything is behaving very much like the original. Turning up the cutoff. More cutoff, more resonance, more distortion. Pretty damn close. I'm happy with that. I couldn't help but emulate the bit at the end where he's playing with the filter frequency live. Lots of fun. So there you go. High state of consciousness acid sound with freeware. I'll leave a link in the description to Gaia Beats' video. Thoroughly recommended you give that a watch. I'll also leave this patch. Remember, Vital is free. Go grab it. It's basically free serum with a better interface. No brainer. And of course, for the uninitiated, I'll leave a link to High State of Consciousness original. Go and check out the OG. It's a classic. So that was all for today. I thought that would be a really interesting process to document. If it helped you out, leave us a like. If you loved it, leave us a sub. And until next time, go and tweak your acid vibes. <laughs> Something like that. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.